Welcome to Envima tutorial part 5. In this video, we will begin to explain how to read the simulation results using Leonardo, the data analysis and visualization program within the Envimet software. We can access the Leonardo program by opening it from the Envimet headquarter. Once the Leonardo opens, we can see a large blue area which will display the data from our simulation in the form of a visual map as well as a variety of settings for various parameters and visuals on the left side of the screen. However, the first thing we need to do is to load the data we wish to analyze. In order to do this, hover over the Data Navigator tab and click on the Select File button here. To load specific output data from a simulation run, we need to choose the specific data and time we wish to view and analyze and click OK. Once the time period is selected, Leonardo will load the entire dataset in the folder we chose our time period from, which then allows us to pick a different time period if we wish once the data has loaded in. Here we can see the available time periods we can choose from. We will stay with our original time selection and now click on Extract Data to Map. We need to select the data which we wish to analyze and display under the Data drop-down menu. In this example, we will analyze potential air temperature. We need to select which data should be displayed under the Data drop-down menu, in this case air temperature. We also need to adjust our K value which determines the height of the temperature data that will be displayed. The K value refers to which grid cell plan should be displayed, with the K value of 1 being the first and the lowest Z grid cell. We can easily see the height displayed to the right for each K value we enter. For this example, we will analyze the temperature at a pedestrian height or around 2 meters high. Now we need to click on the Extract 2D button. Once our data map is loaded here, there are a few options that we can change. Make sure data layer settings, data layer legend and spatial layer settings are all activated and have a green X next to them. If they do not, you can toggle the activation of any layer settings with a right click edit under the data layer legend. We can click on the floating option to make our map look a bit smoother. We can also edit the display colors or choose a different color palette. We can also change the map legend values so they are easier to analyze. The values in the legend are auto-generated. However, we can set the start value and each values type manually. Finally, under special layer settings, we can click on the Envimet defaults button to visualize Envimet objects such as buildings in our maps for easier viewing. Be sure to click on the update button after changing any values to ensure they take effect. When we are finished, we can export our analysis as a Leonardo file in order to load the current analysis again with the same settings at a layer time by clicking the Save Map button. We can also export the analysis as a meta file or bitmap by clicking on the Export Map button. This analysis process can be used to analyze most other data types in Leonardo such as radiation, building data or other inflow analysis process. Like previous process for the radiation analysis, we need to select a specific data from a specific time from the folder. Then select the diffuse radiation value and select the K value and press Extract 2D button. Then we can see the radiation differences on the map and change settings to our likings. Wind vectors in Leonardo can be overlaid on top of any previously analyzed data to provide a more comprehensive overview. In this example, we already have an air temperature analysis loaded and displayed. To display and analyze 
wind vector. So we first need to ensure that the vector settings under the extract data to map settings of the data navigator are correct. By default, the vector settings are correctly set as flow U, flow V, and flow W. All in meter per second means we do not need to change these values. Next, we need to activate vector settings on the left side of the screen by right clicking. Under the vector settings, we can adjust the variety of options. Typically, by default, the length scale vector value may be too high. Lowering this value by 10 times or 1 decimal point typically yields better visual results. We can also turn on draw random vectors instead of having a single vector for each grid cell and can adjust the total number of displayed vectors, customizing the displayed area of our liking. If we want to only display the wind vectors without the air temperature colors in the background, we can simply turn off the data layer settings. Additionally, under Vector Settings, we can turn on Use Data Layer Color. This will display the wind vectors with the color scale of the data layer. In this case, we had air temperature loaded. The length of the vectors refers to the relative wind speed as described in the legend. If we would like to have the wind vectors to be color-coded for the wind speed, we simply need to go to our data navigator and switch our loaded data from air temperature to wind speed and then click the Extract 2D button again. We can, of course, adjust all of the settings to our liking and save our data as Leonardo file or extract as a bitmap file. Analyzing single grids in Leonardo is fairly straightforward. Once we have a data map loaded in any respect regardless of a specific time or specific data, a single grid can be analyzed a reference to any specific time or length of time and possible data. To analyze a single grid cell, we simply right-click on the grid cell we wish to analyze and select the first option, Explore Grid Cell. This will open an Analyze window. From this window, we can choose a specific time by clicking on it in the middle time series area, or we can select a range of times by right-clicking on a timestamp and selecting it as the start time and then selecting another as the end time. We can then click on any of the variables on the right side of the window to analyze the data. For these variables, the graph below, if we wish to export the data from the grid cell, we can click the Export Sheet button to export our data as an Excel file or as a CSV file. Keep in mind, by default, simply exporting the data for all variables over the course of the selected time range. In order to export specific data, simply change the slow variable option to select instead of all. This will only export the data of the variables we have selected on the right side of the window. In order to compare datasets in Leonardo, we need to select two different datasets or two different times within the same dataset to compare. In this example, we will compare two different times from the same data set. First, we need to open the Data Navigator tab on the right side of the screen. We then need to select the first data set we wish to use as the control set of our comparison. For this example, we will compare the changes in wind speed between noon and 8 p.m. So we will choose the data set from the noon directly. However, the time can be easily changed once the data set has been loaded. Once the data set has loaded, we can open the Data Navigator tab again. From here, we can see various times the data is available from. We are free to click on any time we choose. However, we will keep our first control data set at noon. Now, we need to load in our second dataset that we will compare to our control set. To do this, we need to click on the File Set B button and load the second dataset file. 
Keep in mind that comparing two different model areas or one where the building positions have changed is a difficult and complex process that is not recommended and will not be covered in this video. For this example, we will simply compare two different times for the same simulation run. So we will select the 8 p.m. dataset from the same day of the same simulation run as our noon dataset. Once our second dataset is loaded, we need to open the Data Navigator tab again and then click on Extract Data to Map button. Here we can select our data parameter and that we wish to compare. For this example, we will be comparing wind speed. The other parameter we need to adjust is the K value or the height above the ground we want to display. In this case, we will choose a K value for 3 which corresponds to a height of 2.1 meter above the ground for this model, a good height to represent the pedestrian level. Once we have our parameters set, we need to click on the button Compare 2D. This will extract both datasets and display the difference in values as opposed to clicking on the Extract 2D button, which will only display the single dataset we had selected. Once our data map loads, we need to adjust the color palette and display in order to better visualize the data. To do this, we need to click on the data layer legend on the left side of the screen. We can then click on the floating button to get a smoother view. If we click on select palette, we can choose a specific color palette that fits our situation. When comparing two different datasets, it is useful to have a color palette to have a neutral color in the middle, like white for instance, and gradually stronger colors heading towards the extremities of the data differences. For this reason, we will choose the colors for warm and cold in a 20 steps palette. Once selected, we need to change some additional parameters to make sense of the new palette. The parameter starting color at index number needs to be set to 0 as the default of 10 is only utilizing half of the available colors we have selected. Since we have 20 color steps, we need to adjust the number of color parameters to 20 to represent this. We also need to adjust our first value and step size parameters. We need to first click on the auto fit button to manually set these values. We need to select a starting value and step size for the legend which is adopted so that the value of 0 or no change ends up as the middle white color value. Once we have adjusted the values, we need to click on the update button to update the display maps with our edited parameters. We can now see our comparison map correctly, like visualized. If we wish, we can also display our building and vegetation data by clicking on special layer settings and clicking on the button environment defaults. We now have a presentable data comparison map between two different site data. So this is all for our Envimit tutorial series. Thank you for watching. To learn more about other simulation software, check out our other videos linked in the description below and subscribe to the channel.